Camera shake is something I like to make use of in a lot of the games that I work on, especially things like game jams to add that extra little bit of impact uh, where it can aid in certain effects like taking hit damage or firing a weapon. So that's something I thought would be quite cool to cover in this video. And I'm also going to, as well as showing the C++ implementation of this, uh, provide a little bit of information of how we can extend this into a blueprint to once again just kind of extend the usability of this. So for this, if we just go to the C++ folder, I'm going to create a new C++ class. Uh, and this is actually really handy in the Unreal Engine, I guess because it's such a common thing in games nowadays, having this kind of effect. There's actually a class. If we show all classes, there's a pre-made class called Camera Shake with a lot of the variables available in here that are going to be uh, the kind of primary aspects or variables for an, any good Camera Shake. So if we just search for camera shake, we can see we've got that here, the camera shake class. So we're gonna select this and create one of these. As always, I'm just going to name this with the prefix of YT, and then I'll call this one um, underscore camera shake. For this class, because it doesn't really have a grouping that exists that we can put it in, I'm just going to create a new general folder, and this will be good for other kind of general classes we make in the future and then just make sure that we put this back into its public private classes by ticking this. Hit create class and we'll let this do its thing and start implementing the camera shake to our character. Okay, so that took an unusual amount of time for that to compile for me. So if that does take a little bit longer than you're used to, uh, you probably don't have to worry that did take, I think about 10 minutes. Um, I, I stopped recording at one point because it just didn't end. So yeah, don't worry about that if you encounter the same thing. Now what we want to do is we'll, as always, be given our code file and our header file when this opens. Now this one's a little bit different to what we used to. Remember when we created our character, for example, we already had, uh, because it's an actor class, we had our constructor, um, which is just, if you remember, in the code file, the pre-made function, we have our constructor function where we can pre-fill all of the variables and things. This class doesn't come with that, so the first thing we want to do is create our constructor. Um, and just to, to mention, this is actually going to be a really quick, simple tutorial. So um, I'm going to add a few extra bits, which I'll leave until the end of the video, just to provide uh, a little bit extra information and make this a little bit more flexible. But we'll get the very basic and uh, the, the requirements done first. So what we want is our constructor, which is uh, simply the name of the class with the type ahead of it. So uh, this is a, we can see here we've got U camera shake. So this will be U. Uh, yt underscore camera shake. Okay, so that is the declaration for our constructor done. Just above this, I'm going to put this in the public section um, and we'll probably end up just leaving everything public for this class. It's very simple. So that should be fine for our uses at the moment. We then, of course, want to make sure that we create the function for this. And I don't think that we can use the quick action here. So if we declare that, it's going to come up with an issue. So just take a copy of the name of the uh, the function again. And again, quite simply to create the constructor, it is done like so. So we now have our constructor ready to go. And this is quite simply, like I said, where we're going to be putting all of the variables that will control the camera shake. This is another one of those classes which makes a lot more sense, visually at least, in Blueprint because there's actually quite a lot of different variables that we have access to immediately, which we're just not going to know about whilst we're doing this in C++. When you start getting used to things a bit more, you'll know what you have access to and what you want to change to get the right kind of feel. Uh, but this is something that's going to make a lot more sense when we have this as a Blueprint. But just to begin with, if you follow along, and we're going to pre-fill some values so that we get at least some kind of rumble going. So the first thing we want to do is affect the oscillation duration of the shake, which is just how long it wobbles for. And this is, all of these are gonna be preset values. So we can see here just by starting that, it will pre-fill the rest of this, which is the oscillation duration. So we'll select that, and we're gonna set this to something like 0.25 should be fine. We're gonna give the same sort of value for the blend time. And uh, this is the blend in time, first of all. And we'll make this uh, 0.05. And then we've got the oscillation blend out time and we'll make this the same value at 0.05. Okay, and then the other things we want to affect, uh, this is going to be the direction in which we shake the camera essentially. So we're just going to play with the pitch and the yaw for this, and we've got our amplitude and our frequency. Okay, so to get this, we get the rot oscillation.pitch.amplitude. So again, all of these are predefined, so we're just accessing the variables already defined in the parent class of the camera shake. 
uh, and I'm going to give this a random float. So I'm going to say fmath rand range. Now these are completely made up values. Uh, you can try anything here. I'm just going to put something down which seems like it might make sense, uh, which to begin with, I'll make uh, three and five. So we've got a random range, a minimum and a maximum. And then we want to also affect the frequency, which is how often this happens. And this is going to be again for the uh, rot oscillation dot pitch, but this time dot frequency. Just going to give this a random value again. So I'm going to copy this and this tends to be a lot faster. So this is again, like I said, how often. So um, if you want just one sort of big impactful boom, then you can set this to something low, like between one and three or just one. Uh, but if you want something which kind of reverberates, then we're going to make these higher so it happens uh, more often. So I'm just going to make this between 15 and 20. Okay, now I've these done, I'm just going to use the same values here. A little bit lazy, I just want to get something kind of working to show you. So I'm going to copy this, and all we're going to change is we want to this time affect the Yule. So I'm going to drag these and change this to Yule. So we're going to affect the pitch in one go, the Yule in the other, so we're going to be moving forward and sideways. And with that done, we can hit the compile and we can start having a look at this working in the editor. And I actually got one step ahead of myself there. Uh, now we can compile that if you want. That all compiled perfectly fine. Uh, and that's just going to speed up the next compile that we'll need to do anyway. But I actually forgot that we need to implement this. So we're going to do this back in the character class because we've got a lot of the functionality ready. Uh, like I said, I want to try and keep these as specific to the topic as possible. Because we already have some input from our character setup, we can just use the, uh, I think I'll use the fire forward function here. So when we fire, we're going to treat this kind of like a gunshot or something. So we're firing and we get a bit of recoil. So I'm going to add this uh, as soon as we, we press fire. This doesn't matter whether we hit anything. This is just going to be whenever we tell our character it's firing, we're going to add some camera shake. And this is very simple, which is probably why I forgot to implement it. Uh, but what we want to do is we're going to get the world. We're going to get the first player controller. So we're just getting the player controller that we have, uh, which will have access to the player camera manager. And then we're going to play the camera shake. And we're going to need to fill in a value, which we'll go and do in the header in just a second. Okay, so we can see here, uh, it didn't happen again. I really wanted the uh, the autocomplete to come up so it would show us what we need to fill in here. Um, but it's it knows that there's an expression, it doesn't know what it is. But what it wants is a class of type camera shake. So we're going to go over to our header file. We'll go down to the bottom of our protected section, should be fine. And all we want to do is we want to add a value under the T subclass of, and this is going to be the U camera shake, and we'll call this one cam shake. Now this will, to begin with, show that uh, it doesn't know what that type is because we just need to forward declare this above. But before we do that, I just want to give this a U property as well so that we can fill this in on the character and we'll be able to assign what type of camera shake we want to play. So this is just going to be a U property and we're going to give this the edit anywhere specifier. And then up here, under the other four declarations we have, we're just going to say class U camera shake. Okay, so if that's saved, if we go back to the code file, we can now pass in our cam shake, which is the one we've just assigned in the header file. And then it, we can pass in another value, which is the scale, so the intensity at which it plays. So we can just pl uh, play this at one uh, because we're going to set all of the intensities and stuff that we want in the actual class itself. So we don't need to add any multipliers or anything to this. So 1.0f for a simple float value here. And at this time we can actually hit compile, we'll get this all built and ready to go. And then we can see this working in the editor. Okay, so we can see again down here that has all compiled successfully. So I'm just gonna head back on over to the editor again. Now, the first thing we need to remember to do is go to our blueprints, the character class, and we just want to look for our new exposed variable here, the camera shake or cam shake. So we've already got our yt underscore camera shake, which is the one we've just created. So we can assign that. And now whenever we press the fire forward trigger, we will be getting some kind of camera shake and we can see how this fills. So <laughs> we can already see here, this is a little bit intense, just somewhat intense. And this is the first kind of drawback of using just C++ for camera shake. It's really not very well fleshed out because now we obviously, if we want to adapt this, we're going to have to go back and forth 
playing with the values. Uh, there's very little which is visual here. It's going to be a lot of trial and error in code recompiling to get the values that we want. Now, one of the uh, obvious things that we can do here is we're going to go to the general folder. We're going to go back to the camera shake and we're going to make a blueprint class of this. So we already have the base functionality there. We've got some values already being passed in, but we can now expose and have a look at what a uh, camera shake class actually looks like. So I'm going to put this in the blueprints folder and I'm just going to call this one BP underscore cam shake. So when you open this, the first thing we can see is we're in the class defaults. This isn't quite a normal blueprint class. Uh, we're not going to get things like the construct and the begin play, but um, inside of the class defaults, we do get a lot of information, which is our oscillation, the blend time and the blend out time, which is what we've set already. Uh, we've also got the rotation, the location. We also have field of view, which we didn't touch in code. Uh, and all of these have their own individual drop downs as well. So you can see there's actually a lot of information going on here, uh, which is why I didn't want to do all of them just in code, uh, because there's a lot of different things that we can affect and change. And this is where the, the visual aspect of this comes in, because now we can just come in very easily and change these. We can just lower this to something down to like one and one for the amplitude. We can come in and play with this. Now, of course, what we also need to do is because we've removed everything from C++, uh, we haven't updated that in the character. So we're going to change this from the C++ reference to the BP camera shake, make sure we compile that and we'll try the new impact. And again, we can already see that's a lot, lot better, um, a lot less forceful um, and less jarring. So again, we can half that, see if that's any better. Uh, and that's more of what I was expecting is just a small rumble when you click. Now, of course, if you want to do something a little bit more in depth, like we did in the C++ where we were randomizing between things, that doesn't quite allow this here to give a minimum and a maximum. Uh, what we could do is we could call the event receive play shake. Uh, so just type play shake here and we can still get access to setting all of these things. So we can get, again, if we set rotation, uh, we set the rotation oscillation, which is just what we're doing in the C++ code. We can split the structure pin We'll split that again. And this is essentially what we were affecting earlier in C++. So then you can do your standard thing where you'd pull off, get a random float um, or a random float in range. And all of this is then very standard blueprint stuff. But again, this will just allow you to iterate uh, a lot more quickly uh, and efficiently to get the camera shake feeling right. And I, I wanted to kind of highlight that because this is something which camera shake can be really good, but if it's overused or if it's too heavy, then it can be quite jarring to the player. So it's definitely something you want to iterate over quite a lot to make sure you're getting it feeling right. And of course, going back and forward compiling, is just gonna make that complete chore. So with that done though, we've got our customizable camera shake in the game. So we can, like I said, come in, edit that. And it just feels a little bit cooler again, because we've now got some kind of forceful feedback happening whenever we fire or uh, make an interaction. And of course you could come in, add this to the hit collider. So when you take damage, you could add a little bit of camera wobble to indicate that, that the character has taken damage and things like that. Um, and it's just that very simple call to a very simple class to make in C++. So I'll leave that video here for today. As always, if you enjoyed these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around that always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the players on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.